Welcome to the Women in Leadership Body, Mind, Soul, and Business Podcast. I'm Charlie. And I'm Heather. And together we are working to connect women in leadership and business, empowering each other, improving the health and wellness of our community, body, soul, and mind, connecting to the heart and soul of who we are and what we do. Hi, welcome to the garden. Cindy's garden, to be specific. Welcome. We, we are here with Cindy. She is fabulous, and she is from Exceptional Connections, here to share all things that inspire her today. So why don't you take a couple of minutes, introduce yourself, and then we will get into our discussion. Today. Absolutely. So I am the CEO and founder of Exceptional Connections. It's a networking group that I founded in 2009 during the great recession. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a, just a time to bring people together. Mm -hmm. And so I had been networking and just really hungry for doing it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I wasn't finding good role models. And I was just like, oh man, you know, how do I do this? Cause it's like the blind leading the blind when you mm -hmm. have a bunch of kindergartners teaching each other socialization, right? That's mm -hmm. how I looked at it. And so I was really seeking out and looking at people who were influencers mm -hmm. and who were good, exceptional connectors. Mm -hmm. And so I started modeling what I was doing and networking with them. And um, I found myself in going to networking groups, creating a best practice list, mm -hmm. for the things I liked, the things I didn't like. Oh, yeah. And I was cherry picking. And then I created a list of what I wanted a networking group to look like. And I started sharing it with my networking friends <laughs> and they were like, oh, that sounds great. Where is it? I want to go. And I'm like, it's in my head. It yet. <laughs> it's in my head. <laughs> and so they encouraged me to start Exceptional Connections. Mm -hmm. So it's 13 years ago. So um, that's well, been my passion in, in bringing people together and nurturing relationships. And I'm also a relationship marketing strategist mm -hmm. and gratitude coach. So it all kind of goes together in terms of building relationships and, and trust, you know, the no like and trust factor mm -hmm. that we talk about. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then of course my best friend, the garden, my love of gardening. Mm -hmm. And um, so just my time in the garden has just allowed me to really think about, pray about mm -hmm. the connections that are in our you know, relationships and building relationships, building trust, mm -hmm. and then also the process of build, you know, creating and growing a garden. Mm -hmm. uh, and we love to garden. We talk a lot about gardening. Um, I do my best to garden with Charlie. I can't keep up with her yet, mm -hmm. but I will eventually. Well, she has 10 <laughs> acres, right? Yeah. That's a lot. I, I consider myself a baby gardener. Most of my 10 acres is managed forest land, mm -hmm. but I do have a pretty large garden space um, that I love and I'm learning and I'm nurturing. And this year with how dry it's been, I'm just trying to keep it alive. Yes, but exactly. <laughs> um, you have some really in, uh, great lessons that you learn in your garden. Yes. About now. Yes. I, yes, I have. And, and actually it's literally like on a knee pad, digging in the dirt is mm -hmm. where this these six seasons or lessons gleaned from my garden came from. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. We talk a lot about the grounding that you get and the joy from gardening and the meditative facts about it. And that I feel like when you get into that meditative state, that's when it flows, right? Exactly. Like that's when it comes. So these are things that came to you yes. in your garden. Yes. Doing the things that we talk about all mm -hmm. the time on our show. We talk a lot about meditation and different types of meditation. So I'm excited. So you call it six. Well, it's lessons gleaned from the gardens mm -hmm. and there's six seasons mm -hmm. to gardening. And what was really kind of inspiring to me, even it's kind of fun when you, it comes to you and then you're, you're like, you know, impressed by <laughs> what, what came that. to you. <laughs> it's like, you know, thank you for using me as a, you know, a vessel God yeah. for this beautiful information. Mm -hmm. But what really came to me is yes, it applies to gardening. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I just found that gardening is a lot more like networking than you might think at first glance. Right. And that's what came to me, mm -hmm. but the process itself, you know, lends itself beautifully to gardening. And, but you're, if you're thinking of a, a business mindset, it also fits beautifully for that. Mm -hmm. And the metaphors I'm going to be using are garden metaphors, because I feel like there there's a sticky factor mm -hmm. where when you talk about, like you said, nurturing, nurturing, you know, isn't yeah. that a beautiful word? It is. It's so kind and loving instead of 
I'm grooming my network. Oh, you know what I mean? Or dirty I've got a of... target, you know, I'm targeting my client, my ideal client. Not that those are bad, but it kind of makes it feel a little predatory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More like hunting mm -hmm. than farming or gardening to me is just so lovely and allowing things to, you know, do have their own course, like mm -hmm. to grow in their own time. And every friendship is like that, right? Because sometimes your friendships yes. are brand new, they're baby seeds. Yes. And then you have the older friendships that are maybe like your mature tree. Yes. Or, you know, you can think about mm -hmm. and identify different people in your life just by thinking in that way. Right? Absolutely. So, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time to grow from a seed to a seedling to the, you know, a baby star plant to bearing fruit. To bearing fruit. It mm -hmm. takes time. And so I love the, you know, the analogies and metaphors because they they give us permission to give that time for things to be able to flourish. Mm -hmm. So the six seasons um, for, you know, that in your garden and in your networking are number one, I'll just go through them. Okay. And then we can talk about them individually. How's that? Okay. That sounds okay. Like a perfect. So the first one is to plan. Okay. So again, you plan things and then next you prepare. Okay. Okay. Next is the planting piece. Okay. And think of it as a circle and the plan, prepare, plant are on one sphere of the circle, one okay. hemisphere. Uh -huh. And then on the other hemisphere, we're looking at the pruning, picking, and prosper. Mm -hmm. And you notice they're all peas. peas. And they came to me in peas, mm -hmm. except for the, um, which piece was it? The, the pick piece and the prosper piece. I'm mm -hmm. like, I need a harvest. I need a P word for harvest. And, and what I realized, and I'll just tell you this first, because it's just so critical to this kind of perception of it is the pick is when we pull in mm -hmm. and the prosper is when we give out. Oh. So that's kind of a, just a little taste of it. So, all right. Okay, all right. So we've got plan, prepare, plant, prune, pick and prosper. Yep. That's okay. the, those are the six seasons. And I did six instead of four because it's all about cyclical, right? Uh -huh, right. And I wanted to kind of get people's attention. Like, wait a minute, there's only four. No, there could be more than one season, more than four seasons for things. We're often in different seasons with our business, or yes. our homes, our so lives. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So accomplishing each step in the process, in this, in this six step, six season process, moves us closer to the accomplishment of our vision mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and mastery you yeah. know being a master gardener mm -hmm. being a master networker mm -hmm. and of course you know reaping a bountiful harvest mm -hmm. so it's just a, such a beautiful vision um so you know in watering the garden as with networking the act of sowing seeds nurturing them and watering them places the vision of the harvest in motion yeah, mm. it's just such a beautiful picture that I love and that inspires me. So there's six seasons for gardening that we're talking about, you know, we're talking about mm -hmm. here. And if you are diligent and follow those, you can actually be considered a master gardener, mm -hmm. right? If you follow certain things and learn certain principles and the same holds true with networking. Mm -hmm. So in networking, and I have a different process I've created maybe for another day, uh, but it's connect <laughs> discover, listen, that's mm -hmm. the right hemisphere and that's contribute, follow up and nurture. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So that is, you know, you follow these steps and even the ones that I just shared with the, the prepare and plan, and you are a master networker, mm -hmm. but you have to, you don't just do it by, I've been doing this for 20 years. You have to be really focused and diligent mm -hmm. and be a good student. Mm -hmm. Right. So are you ready to get it going? Yes. Okay. All right, so the first season is to plan. So I love this season. This is a season that frankly happens once my garden's put to bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although all I do time. it all year long. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. I'm, I'm always, always planning. Yeah, I'm always like in looking my garden, going, okay, you know, like I showed you in our tour today, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna be at laying more cardboard and putting more chips. And so, you know, this is what I'm gonna be doing next year and this is how I'm gonna do expansion. So it's always kind of in my head, but it's really more formal where I sit down with a notebook mm -hmm. and I really sketch out and mm -hmm. plan 
what's going to be in my garden. And so the planning piece, again, if you're thinking about gardening and networking side by side or on top of each other, however, this is the time where we're envisioning. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just dreaming. We're um, forecasting what we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. What is our purpose or intent? What do, with, yeah, how do we want to show to up? What do we want it to look like? Who we want to attract? Mm -hmm. All that beautiful stuff, right? So that's the plan part. Next, we move into prepare. And prepare is fun because we can't, especially in the garden, you can't dig in the dirt yet. We can't really plant our, you know, our seedlings or our plants. In February when the ground's solid. Right, you know, mm -hmm. like, exactly. Or there's a mud pit, one right. or the other, right? But there are things you can do, like you can prepare the good soil. So okay. you lay your chicken manure and lay more chips on it or mm -hmm. fertilize it or, you know, take care of things. Also, that's when I buy my dirt. You saw my dirt mm -hmm. pile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I buy my dirt. Stockpile some dirt. When it's on sale. Mm -hmm. And... I use it all year long and then I actually have it for the next year before soil is available at the nurseries. Mm -hmm. right. So my big pile of wood chips in and the front. Old dirt's better than new dirt anyway. Well, it doesn't, that's go, part bad. Of the breakdown, it doesn't right? go bad. It doesn't go bad. Dirt doesn't go bad. Does, dirt doesn't go bad. It can be enhanced yes. with, um, you know, natural fertilizers, yes. compost. Yes, like that. absolutely. But, yeah, it doesn't go bad. Doesn't go bad. So we we plan and we prepare, we get our tools and mm -hmm. it's for networking. You know, we just like, where am I going to network? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of people do I want to meet? Mm -hmm. What am I going to wear? What am I, I going to wear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I exactly. Know. And so I love the analogy of both. And then, so then we plant, excuse me, we planned, we prepared. Now it's time to plant. Mm -hmm. Planting is so much fun. That's the fun part. It's so much fun. <laughs> like, I'm going to give you a little seed. That's right. Seed we seed. get to really like the vision we have in our head gets to actually be implemented. Mm -hmm. We get to take action. Um, and so whether, again, it's networking or building your business, um, gardening, mm -hmm. it's the action piece. Mm -hmm. It's the, the part that we've been waiting for and dreaming about. And so this is where we implement, we take, you know, um, take action, focus, and we sow the seeds. This is the part I love for a promising future. Mm. So something I'm really passionate about is like, we won't sow seeds in life if we don't have hope or a vision for the future. Mm -hmm. To plant a garden is to... Uh, have hope for the future. So yes. Yeah. That is exactly what came to me. And I'm like, if I don't have faith that this is going to grow, mm -hmm. I'm not going to like this year, this year was a delayed year, mm -hmm. about three weeks because of the weather, it was too cool to plant things. Mm -hmm. So I didn't plant them because I didn't think they'd survive. Mm -hmm. So I held off planting them. Mm -hmm. So that's really the, what you just said was, was perfect. Yep. Yeah. Planting a garden is having hope for the future. Yes, yeah. it is. And, and same for our businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really don't feel like you're going to make a difference in the world and the community um, with what you're doing, you're not as apt to do it. Because mm -hmm. being, especially being an entrepreneur, yeah. it takes a lot of gumption, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of grit and gumption, I say. Mm -hmm to get out there and you know give the marketplace what you feel it needs mm -hmm. yeah i feel like everyone has something to offer the world it's overcoming the fear of letting others see that mm -hmm. that's the hard part and so you know and that's that's all part of the planting yes are you planting the seeds for your own future as well as helping those around you yes uh, you know nourish their garden too Yes, because the goal is abundance. Yeah, and yes. abundance means giving it away, and that means more than enough. Yeah, right. And so that's the goal. Like your strawberries. Yes, <laughs> I love your strawberry. You know, you you said you had you know gallons you, and gallons yeah. and gallons. So of you strawberries. ate all you can eat. You uh -huh. gave some away. I you canned some. Canned some. Mm -hmm. Made things out of it. Mm -hmm. Have some in the freezer. Yeah, like all the places, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, so we've done the first hemisphere. Mm -hmm. We planned. We prepared. We planted. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing to understand about this process for gardening and for networking is it's not a check, check, check. 
right. It's mm-hmm. it's ongoing. I'm mm-hmm. still planning. I'm still preparing even for next year mm-hmm. or for later, you know, this fall. Um, and the planting well, you happens the ongoingly in the ground yes. in the fall yes. and then they they yes. they sprout in the spring so there's mm-hmm. all there's a cyclical to every season for that know, plant for that so plant. that whatever yeah. that plant needs whenever mm-hmm. that plant needs to be planted to you know have an optimal yield for it mm-hmm. so the the next piece the fourth piece that's on the left hemisphere is pruning mm-hmm. and i have to tell you if there's any lesson that I've learned from the six step process that's really hit home to me is the pruning piece. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't honor that as much or think it's very important. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to see in our businesses because we're like heads down, getting Mm -hmm. things done. Mm -hmm. But um, the pruning is something that's ongoing. So Mm -hmm. as soon as I start planting, I'm pruning. I mean, Mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of pruning is really discarding that which is no longer living Mm -hmm. or serving you. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's eliminating, streamlining, cleaning up. So again, think of this in terms of your your business, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Weeding out anything that will drain positive energy or growth. Mm -hmm. So I've always, that's always been my secret Mm -hmm. in gardening, even as a young girl, and I'll, I'll tell you after this process, you know, if, if you want to know how I got started gardening, but or my early beginnings, if you will, but that's what I learned as a young girl is I have these little plants that I'd grow in my windowsill. And the reason mine had survived and my sisters and friends didn't is because I was always pruning off the, you know, deadheading the flowers mm-hmm. and taking the leaves that were, were dying. Mm-hmm. Because what I learned early is all the energy in that plant, it will still go to that dead flower or that dead leaf. Mm -hmm. It will be sapping that energy instead of to new growth. Right. And so once I really got that premise and practiced it in my garden, I realized the power of pruning and of streamlining and cleaning up and being diligent about taking out of our garden and our businesses that which no longer serves us. Right. I love that. Mm -hmm. Cause I, that's one of my favorite things to do, right. Is to go through the systems like, and like, okay, so I do this, then you do this, then I do this, then you do this. Like, do we need to do it differently? Like, I love mm-hmm. that. Like we looking at that moved stage. a bunch of files over to the archive folder. <laughs> like, yeah, it's the board. clean, clear mm-hmm. out, clean out. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's just out of sight, out of mind too. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you don't yeah. always have to get rid of it. It's just getting it out of your eyesight so that mm-hmm. you can have a little more clarity and more yeah. space. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of networking, and this is the piece that I think is harder than the gardening analogy, it really takes a ruthless commitment to cut off, cut back what's no longer serving you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes that takes the form of relationships. Mm-hmm. And it's hard because we don't want to be that mean or whatever, you know, like even when people say, I'm cleaning out my Facebook, right? I'm getting rid of some contacts. Say hi, if you're still here. Say hi, if you're still here. Yeah. And it's just the whole idea of, because we're always wanting to build, right? Mm -hmm. In our businesses, in our lives. And the idea of like, oh, but I might need that. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, I hate to, I don't want to be mean. Um, But it's really... We, we need to be able to ha- have that ruthless commitment and on the the verge of, uh, on the on the note of why you want to to do that on facebook is that if you have people that aren't interacting on right. facebook they're actually holding you down in the algorithm Ooh. so if you prune that mm-hmm. and you do that i didn't know it that cleans up your algorithm i cleaned up my groups it. this morning a little bit i was like i don't need to follow that group anymore i don't need to follow that group anymore it, because you know, your feed ends up getting cluttered with things right. that aren't serving you. Right. So when someone tells me that their their feed's just negative and full of this, that I'm like, why? <laughs> can, right. can we talk? <laughs> because you know, yes. <laughs> yes, let's prune. I was like, I don't have that problem. And then I right. realized I had done that step right. of only finding things that are bringing me joy. And those are the things I'm following. So every time I have my feet open, I'm loving on everybody because it's people I want to love on. Absolutely. Like, it's perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> and pruning is kind of a 
like nurturing. Mm -hmm. It's a gentle word, yeah. you know, instead of cut them out, <laughs> get right. rid of them. Right. That, you know, those that feels very like masculine. Like yeah. hunter, gather, <laughs> yeah, prune, like cut them out. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But when we're pruning, we're you know again, we're just we're, we're our vision is for life, mm -hmm. vitality, new growth, mm -hmm. and nothing that'll pull it down, right, or sap the energy. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we planned, we prepared, we planted, we're pruning ongoingly. Mm -hmm. Again, all this is a process. We're we're all doing it continually. It's not a check system. But then there comes a time in your garden mm -hmm. that I know you know and yes. you've experienced with with her garden is the picking. Yeah. So the picking is a beautiful time because that's just like the culmination of all your efforts coming to mm -hmm. fruition, mm -hmm. and where you actually get to hold that little you know tomato like we mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. uh, we snacking, were snacking on, on the sun gold there. tomatoes. Mm -hmm or the squash, mm -hmm. make a dish with it, or even put the parsley in, mm -hmm. you know, there's something really gratifying about that. And, mm -hmm. and I have to tell you just as kind of a side note. So one of the things I love about gardening is being able to come out to my garden with a little basket mm -hmm. and pick parsley and pick basil and pick my squash or my tomatoes and go in the house and do something with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like showing my husband, see, I just went shopping. <laughs> I call this my living pantry. Mm -hmm. This is my living pantry. So I can come out and just pick things, but mm -hmm. that's, I brings me so much joy. So that's the picking part where we're harvesting it in, mm -hmm. right? We're making use of it. We're, you know, just uh, enjoying it. And then, you know, the part that this, the last piece of this uh, seasons uh, glean from the garden is the prospering part. Mm -hmm. And this is the part that gives me so much satisfaction because out of the abundance of a garden, mm -hmm. you can share it. Mm -hmm. And so again, just like I shared earlier, mm -hmm. you know, you pick, mm -hmm. you bring it in, bring in the harvest, mm -hmm. and then the prosper is to share the abundance. Yes. So Which lovely. is exactly what abundance is for. It's to share with others. It's not to hoard it. No. It's all to yourself. No. And, you know, it's, it's about, uh, it is about the sowing piece mm -hmm. is the planting piece mm -hmm. and the reaping piece is the mm -hmm. harvest piece. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, seed plant and harvest that's since the beginning of time. Yeah. yeah. That's the government of nature. I feel like it's like the circle of life. It is the circle yeah. of life. That's a beautiful way mm -hmm. to say it. And so, um, so that's, you know, it's just been really gratifying to have that process to, to, you know, pause and think about, contemplate, mm -hmm. and then, you know, being able to transfer that to our businesses mm -hmm. and use mm -hmm. those similar kind of feelings and lessons mm -hmm. um, that we all need to remember. Mm -hmm. And part of it is the pause too, because you're waiting for things to grow um, and you're, and there's that time in there that you should be resting and doing the self-care and doing the other yes. things that that you know if, if you can't get to the hose to do the watering you got to work on you know like right. what are the other pieces and another a piece of that is is you you plant it you water it you care for it and you leave it be you don't pull it out to see if it's done yet <laughs> Good God. that's brilliant and that's exactly what I like to share with people in terms of the networking piece, because we know that in gardening, right? Right. We won't do that. Right. But in networking, we want the results and we want to, is it growing? Is that relationship blossoming? And you can kill that relationship. Yeah. I mean, or severely handicap it. Yeah. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. And you're the creep. <laughs> yeah. People's hair. Like, <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Your hair smells good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, it's about just mm -hmm. trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the most important mm -hmm. piece. If you know that there's okay. a process mm -hmm. and you know there's there's a cycle, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen without you. Mm -hmm. But how great to have that in those insights mm -hmm. when you're running your business and you're you're you know growing and building a garden. What a beautiful alignment, mm -hmm. right? Because you can get into the vortex of the pattern mm -hmm. of what you're doing and and find that meditative balance to it. Mm -hmm. It's a flow for sure. Yeah. And we're, we weave in and out of it. And then there is that 
pause time. You know, that would be a good one to add, pause, <laughs> because everything needs to marinate and has time. Like we need time to kind of pull back and rest, take vacations, get rejuvenated. Well, the garden does too. Right. And so there are certain things that I'll plant for fall garden, but there's a lot of areas, and we talked about it when we went through the garden mm -hmm. tour, that I'm going to leave just to so that it can marinate. I'm going to give it what it needs. Mm -hmm. And just leave it be. And let it be. Because when it's time to harvest, that abundance will come back. Mm -hmm. And not a minute sooner. Right. And, right. and mm -hmm. the other piece I was thinking about is I also need to rest because mm -hmm. I put a lot of energy into taking care of my garden. Mm -hmm. I take it seriously because I am mm -hmm. the garden tender. I am, mm -hmm. you know, who else is going to take care of it? You. Me. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not here, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, I'm bringing community into it to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also wanting it to be sustainable mm -hmm. for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been just, it's been a lovely journey. And I've really just been so grateful for those epiphanies mm -hmm. that came literally on my knees, digging in the dirt and be able to share those with others who mm -hmm. can take those little insights at like the sticky factor I was talking about, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about each relationship as a seed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you are number 13 for my garden parties this summer. I've been having garden parties since July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I consider you being here, you know, we're in a relationship garden. This mm -hmm. is my relationship garden. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the literal garden, you know, with the mm -hmm. tomatoes and whatnot. And then my relationship garden, which we can play in this space, right? Mm -hmm. And have fun and enjoy it and build our relationships. Absolutely. That's so I fabulous. love it. And I love that you do garden parties to connect people together because it is a very comfortable, neutral environment of positive growth. Hmm. It has been. And I actually had the vision in 2018 and did a couple of little parties. And then mm -hmm. 2019, I did a few more and it was going to hit the ground running in 2020. <laughs> and then you know what happened. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. So you I had my, <laughs> my, that was my pause. So yeah. I just expanded my garden, you know, and this whole thing just marinated. Mm -hmm, and right. has given me time to really be able to flesh it out, which I'm grateful for. And so, um, although I had a few people, 2021, um, you know, it was usually onesie twosie uh, garden parties. I, I started in um, July 15th, I think was my first garden party of this year. And, and so um, you're the number lucky 13 here. <laughs> it's been That's super awesome. fun. Yeah. And I I feel very blessed to be in this space today. Mm. It, it it smells amazing. It, it is tastes beautiful. wonderful. It, it tastes good. You engaged all of our senses. We were out here walking in the sunshine, mm -hmm. and you know we can hear all the nature and um, airplanes and, <laughs> and weed whackers. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's real life, sounds, right? That's right. right. And then, you know, we can, uh, we got to touch and smell everything and then also taste so many wonderful things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. it's, it's an aromatic and munching experience, right? Yeah. So you're welcome. Thank you. And then that also creates that experience where you get calmer, right? So mm -hmm. if you're here with like other people, maybe you didn't know, and you're all trying something new or, you know, you're all getting to ground yes mm -hmm. there's yes. A, a natural earthing that happens in the garden right yeah like, so everybody that comes to a garden party gets grounded we and, all get grounded yeah, yeah. <laughs> together. Grounded. together yes yeah and i've learned so much mm -hmm. because it's not just i mean the the way I, the things i do in my garden have been things i've learned over time and sometimes the hard way and right. frankly i hate to you know, I, I hate to say I killed things, but I have, you know, right. and there's things that I haven't handled well in my garden, planted too soon or and haven't tended. I think tended. people get stuck on that too with gardening, like, oh, I can't start from seeds or, you know, they, they tell themselves that story, right? I right. can't do this. That's how we learn. But that's right? part of the process yep. is mm -hmm. like, not everything's going to survive when you plant it. Same thing with business. Yeah. Not every That's relationship right. you make in business is meant to be your business relationships, right? Like, that's not how it works. You right. have to, so many seeds mm -hmm. right. and trusting the process. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I've learned so much from others that have come to my garden parties and friends that, you know, just sharing their mm -hmm. wisdom and pearls and knowledge mm -hmm. and just, we help each other. Yes. Right. Um, so just to kind of put a bow on this process mm -hmm. and 
you know, my passion for networking and relationships and gardening and tending and all that, um, you know, it's, it's kind of been my mantra with Exceptional Connections is just to imagine, imagine viewing every chance encounter mm. as a connection that can change the course of your life. Mm. If we do that and we don't step over anybody, we just honor that relationship, mm -hmm. we plan, prepare, plant, prune, pick, prosper, we take that relationship and nurture it. You don't know, you never know what's possible. Right. And, and I've experienced that in my life. I have some of my best friendships. I think back, you know, how you track that mm -hmm. relationship back. And I'm like, I'm so grateful that I was open or I took the time mm -hmm. or I made the choice to be there. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that that relationship had the gift of time to really blossom into a friendship that's a lifelong friendship. Mm -hmm. We all have those, right? Right, yes. right. And, and like when I met Heather just oh, over, your story is beautiful. over a year ago, it's like we instant connection. Mm -hmm. It's not like that for everybody. Nope. No. And honestly, yeah. I have only experienced that instant connection like that only a couple of times in yeah. my life. Um, every other relationship has been, you know, cultivated, right. nurtured, right. you know, and trial and error. Yes. Trial and error. <laughs> and that's a beautiful point that you just made because mm -hmm. you're talking about giving things time, mm -hmm. but there's also the click factor. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. The click factor is when things just, it's like you've been, you know, bosom buddies forever. You just, there's, there's a synergy there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually a wonderful piece we should kind of talk about real quick is the companion planting part. Mm -hmm. So you guys, yeah, yes. planting, yes. so you, you, you know, you mm -hmm. nurture each other mm -hmm. and yeah. in a garden, you know, you repel the, the bad bugs that are going to mm -hmm. bother the, the, you know, basil or whatever. And you grow the, the uh, marigolds that mm -hmm. will repel them. Mm -hmm. And, and also the beneficial insects are attracted. So you guys, you know, I can tell you like, you have each other's back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. 100%. Yeah. and you get each other mm -hmm. yes and that's rare mm -hmm. right but you have to be open otherwise you we miss that right oh gosh if we weren't ready we wouldn't have clicked yeah because we had both been on such a parallel journey mm -hmm. of self-discovery and mm -hmm. grief processes mm -hmm. and all the the things that we were doing by ourselves that felt lonely mm -hmm. that we didn't need to do by ourselves because mm -hmm. we were both doing it. Mm -hmm. And then we came together and mm -hmm. empowered each other to do more, yes. to, to show up better every day, to, to take that next step, even though it's scary, make mm -hmm. the phone call or have mm -hmm. the meeting, stand up for ourselves and a different, you know, all of those yes. things, just supporting each other. It's, so I think that's great with the synergy garden mm -hmm. because it's kind of like we're right now we're like the tall stalks of your mm -hmm. um, tomatoes mm -hmm. and we want to take in the little basils mm -hmm. and keep mm -hmm. them safe and mm -hmm. like who can we help like bring it you know draw like-minded people yeah yes. right yeah not yes. that we can't be with everybody and have have a good time mm -hmm. and, and and learn something like that really imagine viewing every chance encounter. You don't want to ever, um, you know, leave anybody out. Right. right. But there are times when having like-minded people together just, in a room. It feels so amazing. It's peaceful. Yeah. yeah. There's not contention. It's easy. It's easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who doesn't like easy? Right. <laughs> Especially what we've been through, right? So uh, real quick to wrap it up, let's review these six seasons. Okay. Okay. So we have planning. Planning. Right. Then we have preparing, right? Yep. Then we have planting. Yes. Which is so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Pruning. Not which, so much which fun. Is work. Not so much fun, but so important. Very right. important. Um, picking. Picking, which is the joyful. Harvest, right? It's the harvest. And prospering. Oh, That's which abundance is, sharing with Which others. is lovely. Which That's is so part. lovely. It is. Yeah. And I can't tell you, like the plant pick and prosper are really the fun pieces. Mm -hmm. The other is like a little more work, mm -hmm. but it's just so rewarding. It is so rewarding. And it, it and that's why we prune because mm -hmm. we have the vision of the harvest in, in our in head. head. 
Yes. And it's in motion and mm -hmm. we can participate with it or we can like if there's something that I don't prune, it will it will die. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the dead leaves or whatever will pull hold it hold down. It and mm -hmm. Hold it back. Hold it back. From being mm -hmm. its best. Right. Mm -hmm. And part of the pruning part, uh, frankly, is um, is, you know, being willing to like I had a over here um, a route. Um, what am I going to call it? Um, that plant is called rosemary, a rosemary plant that wasn't doing very well in a smaller pot. Mm -hmm. I had to transplant it. It needed more room for its mm -hmm. roots. Mm -hmm. So that I kind of consider that part, part of the pruning. Pruning. pruning could be giving space. Giving space. Mm -hmm. And not giving enough room for it to flourish. Yes. To grow, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, my journey as a humble, my humble beginnings as a gardener started when I was a young girl mm -hmm. and I, I call it a corner office. So I had a, co a corner bedroom mm -hmm. with windows mm -hmm. and I had extra window space. And mm -hmm. so I used to actually, I should have brought one out here to show you, but I used to you collect um, mustache mugs. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, the ones How that men, that? you know, yeah. that keep from yeah. getting milk mm -hmm. on their mustache and I'd put little plants on it and put it on my, my windowsill. And all my friends and my sister, you know, would come over and they go, how do you keep them looking so fresh? And it was the pruning, of course, mm -hmm. that's my secret, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so that was always fun. And so they bring me their dead plants or their half dead plants, whatever, and want me to revive them. So that, that was always something that was fun for me to be able to give back to people and give them joy. And so even before I had my garden, I was kind of playing in the dirt <laughs> you just explained to me why my grandma's african violets would die with me because i never did that pruning piece oh. of her little african now i know why like i always worried about that i was like i would give them water i would leave them in alone like, yeah but i never pulled leaves or anything yep. on them because i was always worried because they're hers like i was trying to keep them just perfect right. Right. but they needed more attention yeah. during the time mm -hmm. i have a hard time going yeah. to doctor's offices or whatever <laughs> and seeing their dead plants there you're like i'm oh. like can i like do a little pruning here and they're like oh yeah have you know, fun. <laughs> I have no idea what a difference is gonna make mm -hmm. you know so it's just it's fun to be able to mm -hmm. remind people you know of how important it is to you know well like take care of things like a dahlia if you don't mm -hmm. take the the dead head off mm -hmm. then it goes to seed and doesn't give you another flower mm -hmm. but if you take that dead head off yep you cut it off yep. and then you get a new flower yep. so mm -hmm. yeah it's true I mean, it's so true how, how can you get new flowers in your life every day like, so i had right life. here behind us i had um sugar peas mm -hmm. and i love the sugar peas and i love the blossoms the sugar peas are just so lovely um but i wanted to save the sugar peas for my parties that came through so I could mm -hmm. actually, you know, have people nibble on it. So I wasn't eating as many of them as I should. Mm -hmm. And they started to go to seed and then they stopped producing new ones. Mm -hmm. So you're signaling to the plant, it's time to go to seed if you're not picking them up. Mm -hmm. Because the whatever's on there is already kind of starting to, you know, dry up mm -hmm. and go to seed. Mm -hmm. So timing is everything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you so much for yes, thank you. Talk for, to you girls. This, this is, is this awesome. is so much fun. It's been great um hanging out in your garden. Uh, and I can't wait for the lovely garden <laughs> lunch you made. Yes, us. we're gonna have some it's salad so and goodies from the garden. And so so I'll just leave you with kind of some closing thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. so I just want to encourage everybody to nurture your network mm -hmm. and your relationships mm -hmm. like you tend a garden. Mm -hmm. right that's so beautiful and to take action to cultivate your garden um so just like you don't start off with a harvest mm -hmm. you start with seeds you don't start with great relationships right mm -hmm. we end up with them yeah right mm -hmm. so the investment of time effort and consistency allows us to reap the rewards of being an exceptional gardener and an exceptional connector Yay! <laughs> if you want to get in contact with Cindy from Exceptional Connections, um, check out the links in the description below. Thank you, Cindy, for having us over in your lovely garden. Mm. I, it's been a true blessing and sharing these uh, six seasons um, of you know lessons from your garden is just um, icing on the cake. Thank mm. you so much. You're welcome. And I am just honored that you came into my garden, that we had this time together mm -hmm. to nurture our relationship. 
because I already feel like even though I met you early September I already feel like our relationship took a huge jump in the opportunity to, for us to do things together. So thank you. And I love what you're doing. And I'm like a raving fan. Yay. <laughs> we like to hear that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you all for joining us today for this week's episode. We love you all. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> As entrepreneurs, we feel it is our duty to give. This quarter's cause of the quarter is the Tears Foundation. The Tears Foundation seeks to compassionately lift a financial burden from families who have lost a child by providing funds to assist with the cost of burial or cremation services. They also offer parents comprehensive bereavement care in the form of grief support groups and peer companions. To find out more or to donate today, go to thetearsfoundation.org. Thank you for joining us today on the Women in Leadership Body, Soul, Mind, and Business podcast. Please download the podcast on your favorite podcast player. We love you and we will see you next time. Namaste.